Hi, welcome back. This is Cellular Biophysics. We were talking about fluids and how they are contrasted with solids. And in the following few minutes, I'm going to discuss some problems and their solutions. I'm also going to talk to you about viscoelastic materials and cells. So as it turns out, we had mentioned that the viscoelasticity, city, uh, I'm sorry, the viscosity of fluids in SI units can be expressed in terms of standard values, which we know for water to be one centipoise. So the question is, can we find these values in SI units? For SI units, we need to go back and look, and it turns out they are Pascal seconds. What this means is that we can also convert Pascal into Newton per meter square. Pascal is pressure, nothing but pressure, pressure per unit area, force per unit area into seconds, which converts to kg meters per second square, that is mass into acceleration upon one by m square meter squared into seconds, which leaves you with kg per meter second yeah? or Pascal second. Either or can be used in terms of SI units. But if you want to know the value of water viscosity at 21 degrees Celsius, then we need to convert. For that, we need to know what is the conversion factor. Now, the reason, one of the reasons why we are familiar or we should be familiar with this term one centipoise, it's an easy number to remember at 21 degrees Celsius. It's if you go back to the literature and textbooks, you'll find 0 0.9990, so approximately to 1. So 1 centipoise, by definition, yes, is 10 to the power minus 2 poise. By definition. This is the definition of 1 centipoise. Poise itself is in honor of the researchers who have contributed to fluid mechanics. As a pop quiz question into the history of fluid mechanics, I want you to find out who was the unit boys named in honor of in other words what was this person what did he or she discover and why is this unit called that so we can also write one centipoise is equal to 0 0.01 poise that's capital the second fact we need to know is the conversion from poise to SI unit Pascal second. As it turns out, one poise is equal to 10 to the power minus one Pascal second. So now our job becomes one of substitution, where we can now write one centipoise is equal to we said 10 to the power minus 2 poise, but poise itself is 0.1 Pascal second, so 10 to the power minus 1 Pascal second. And hopefully you are doing this on your own or you're looking or you're thinking. The answer, therefore, to answer the question, what is the conversion factor from 1 centipoise to SI units for the viscosity of water is 0 0.001 Pascal second which we find in biophysics much more convenient to write as 10 to the power minus 3 Pascal second. These two are obviously identical. You know that this refers to the order of magnitude and it is derived from the idea that I can write 10 as 10 to the power 1 Point 0.1 as 10, 10 to the power minus 1, 100 
as 10 to the power minus plus 2 and so on. What is 1? Go to 10 to the power 0. So these are elementary things. You know these, but you need to remember them because it comes in very handy. Because remember, it's very hard to know if I write this value here, how many zeros are there and I have to sit and count and so on and so forth. So I write 10 to the power minus 3. It's much cleaner, much easier to read and objective. Okay? So the viscosity of water in SI units is 10 to the power minus 3 Pascal second at 22 degrees Celsius. The viscosity of water can also be expressed in terms of the kinematic viscosity. So the next problem relates to the question, what is the value of the kinematic viscosity of water? Now, you may recall that in our previous lectures, we have defined kinematic viscosity as nu is equal to eta by rho. These are all Greek letters. Now, rho means density, as you all know. Eta is what we just talked about, dynamic viscosity. And nu is the symbol for kinematic viscosity. So, in other words, this new term is just simply the ratio of the dynamic viscosity to density. You can think of it as a measure of viscosity relative to the density of a substance. In other words, if the density of the substance increases, then the kinematic viscosity or how fast things can go in it will decrease and if the density of the fluid decreases then the kinematic viscosity increases for the same eta value so uh, by definition eta is dynamic viscosity rho is density we need numbers for this so we are also going to take into consideration the fact that density of water at room temperature or uh, standard temperature and pressure is 10 to the power 3 kgs per meter cube, 1000 kg per meter cube. The viscosity of water as we saw right now, the dynamic viscosity is 10 to the power minus 3 pascal second. Just keep this in mind. Now we are basically talking eta by rho, which means minus 3 upon 10 to the power 3. If we substitute the values, we end up with 10 to the power minus 6. Wonderful. All this was in SI units. So we must ask ourselves, what are the units that we use? So we need to go back to our definition of Pascal second in terms of kg meters per second square. And uh, substituting the values, we end up with kg upon meter per second into meter cube by kg, which leaves us with meter square per second. So this is 10 to the power minus 6. And now we can write the units as meter square per second. Remember, for dimensional variables, we all must, we always must mention units. You may sometimes in biological literature find a unit AU. So some of you will probably know that it all sometimes refers to a mu atomic mass unit. It may just refer to 
angstrom unit which are both bona fide units but sometimes it is a false unit sometimes people write it as arb unit arb means arbitrary this is a warning bell for all of us yeah because from a biophysics perspective there is no such thing as an arbitrary unit and i would recommend strongly avoiding such usage now it is true that sometimes in biology it is hard to find calibration units and therefore units are referred to as arbitrary units because there is no unit in other words it's worthwhile contemplating how we can convert arbitrary units into physical units and this is in some senses the real goal of quantitative biology so coming back to kinematic viscosity we can also write kinematic viscosity in terms of centimeter square per second for water the kinematic viscosity is 10 to the power minus 6 the conversion factor from meter square per second to 1 cm square per second is 10 to the power minus 4 this is due to centimeter to meter conversion and the power of 2 1 cm square per second is also a 100 centi stokes and a uh, 100 centi stokes is one stoke also written by st just like we saw poise and centi poise earlier so we now have stokes and centi stokes these are specific units that are invented in some senses to deal with the small numbers that show up let us try a fun exercise if new h2o is equal to in si units 10 to the power minus 6 meter square per second how much is it in centi stokes and stokes so you need to convert from these to these units remember when we are going to meter square to centimeter square we will multiply so meter square to centimeter square is 10 to the power 4 plus 4 so we end up with 10 to the power minus 6 plus 4 cm square per second which is equivalent of a 100 cm stokes which means it is 10 to the power minus 2 plus 2 cm stokes which is equal to 1 centi stoke so i hope you see the value of using centi stokes because the kinematic viscosity of water comes to 1 you recall that we did something similar with centi poise where we said that 10 to the power minus 2 poise is 1 centi poise and 1 poise is 10 to the power minus 1 pascal second viscosity of water is 1 centi poise and that turns out to be 1000 or 10 to the power minus 3 pascal second so in a similar manner to keep things simple 1 centi stoke ends up being the this kinematic viscosity of water which in turn is 10 to the power minus 2 stokes
So, who is Stoke and why did the name come? Again, general knowledge, who are these people? Left to right, I think you recognize the left person, Isaac Newton, Isaac Newton who wrote Principia Mathematica de Nature, the foundation of norm, modern classical mechanics, along with Galileo. The second and third from left, this person and this person, they are interesting. Claude Louis Navier and Sir George Stokes. And the Stoke is in honor of this last person, George Stokes. Indeed, the timeline of Stokes was that he was born in 1819, entered Cambridge, Cambridge University, and started working in 1845 on viscosity, viscoelastic solids, drag, hydrodynamics, water waves, jelly theory and geodesy and Clairaut's theorem. He also worked on diffraction, damped pendulum, clouds, water droplets. In a way, he was a polymath. He did many different things. And you can read more about his historical contributions to modern physics in terms of a history of hydrodynamics from Bernoulli to Prandtl in a book by Darigol and company. Darigol. The next question we want to answer is what is the viscosity of honey assuming we perform a ball drop experiment. So here we are going to combine two things that we have already learned about ball drop viscometry and a very viscous fluid everyone who has had the opportunity of looking at honey knows that it is both very dense and very hard to deform fluid. So in order to get a number, we will need to do a ball drop experiment. Now this is not an experimental lab. This is a classroom. So we will take data from other people's work and try to infer the viscosity. 